On this particular problem, we are looking for, and you really have to watch for those keywords, perpendicular. Now remember, perpendicular lines, their slopes are not the same. If it said parallel, then that same slope. Perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So what we have to do is identify the slope in each one of these, and if their slopes are negative reciprocals of one another, then um, they are perpendicular. So, I don't know if you want me to write that little note here, negative reciprocals. Now, when I say negative reciprocals, you know what I'm talking about? So, an example, like if we had, um, uh, let's say, two-thirds. Its negative reciprocal would be negative three-halves. The opposite sign and then the flip. So, it's an opposite and a flip. So let's look at the two that they give us here. We have y equals 8 minus 7, or 8x minus 7. And we have 6y equals 7 minus x. Now the 8x minus 7, it's in slope intercept form. The slope is right there, it's 8. So if this slope is 8, if the slope of the other line is negative, one eighth, so negative and flip it, then they're perpendicular, which you can probably already tell it's not going to be because when I go to solve this, I got to get y by itself, so it's in slope intercept form, and I get y equals, I get 7 over 6 minus, that would be 1 over 6x. And the slope is always the number in front of the x. So here's my slope on this one. So it's negative one six, and this slope is eight. So are these? They're not parallel because parallel, they're not the same, and they're not perpendicular because they're not negative reciprocals of one another. So our answer would be no. All right, number two says write an equation of a line containing the given point and parallel to the given line. Express your answer in the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, so they give us an equation of x plus 2y equals 5. We need an equation parallel to this one. So what that means is I need to identify the slope. That's all I need from this equation is the slope. Once I have the slope, I'm going to use that slope and the point that they give me to write a brand new equation. So all I need from this is a slope, so I'm going to put it in slope-intercept form. In other words, I've got to get y by itself. Um, you can put 5 minus x. I usually list the x term first, so negative x, and that's a positive 5. And then divide everything by 2. So that's going to give me y. I have negative x over 2, which is negative 1 over 2x plus 5 over 2. Sometimes students, or a very common mistake, is that they're like, okay, that's, I'm done, that's my answer. No, this is the equation that they gave us that they want us to make a new line parallel to this line. So all I need from this is the slope. That's all I need. Now that I have my slope and I have a point, I can write a brand new equation that's parallel to this equation but goes through the point 7, 8. So this is where you can use that, that point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And my y, because it's y minus the y coordinate, my y coordinate of my point is 8. Because I want parallel, I use the same slope, negative half. Had it said perpendicular, what slope would I have used? Flip it, and opposite. Two. Positive 2, yeah. So the, if it said perpendicular, the process is the same. We just would have used a slope of 2 instead. But it said parallel, so we're going to use the same slope. And then x minus my x coordinate, which is 7. Because it wants my answer in slope-intercept form, I need to get it in y equals form. So the first thing I definitely have to distribute here. So I'm going to get negative half x. Negative half times negative 7 would be positive 7 halves. Add 8 to both sides. 
and I get y equals negative half x. If you're doing seven halves plus eight by hand, you got to get common denominators. Um, I would just throw it in my calculator, just seven halves plus eight, and it's going to spit out, that should be 23 halves, because this would be 16, yeah, 23 halves. And that, that is an equation of a line that is parallel to the line that they gave us, but goes through the point 7, 8. So far, so good? Okay. Go ahead and ask questions when you need to, okay? Or if we need to pause and look at it a, a little bit longer, just let me know. Now, something else I want to point out, too, on your review. See, like, if you look at this problem, right below it, it says 7, it says ID 7.5.33. That means Chapter 7, Lesson 5. Okay. The 3.3 three refers to a problem, but that's not going to really mean a lot to you. So if you're struggling with those kind of problems, you can go back to your 7.5 and look at those, and that might help you study too. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the next one says 8.3.9, which is elimination method. So if you're working in Chapter 8 right now, and specifically 8.3, this is going to be a problem or a similar problem that you might see in that lesson. All right, so solve by the elimination method. Remember, in this method, we want our... Um, X is to eliminate when we add, or our Y is to eliminate when we add. Now, neither one will eliminate right now. So I'm going to have to manipulate the equations a little bit to make them eliminate. So the first thing you have to decide is which variable do you want to eliminate? And it's totally up to you. If you want to eliminate the X's, then we need to think in terms of 5 and 10. And what's the first number that both 5 and 10 go into? 10. So the bottom one's already 10x, so wouldn't it be great if the top one was negative 10x? Because then they would eliminate. So can we create negative 10x? Yes. If we multiply that top equation by what? The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> oh, great. 